Here's a loaded question for ya. Is there a right way to be creative? At the end of my last devlog, the conclusion that I landed on was that game dev is, for me, sort of like a meta hobby. It's an excuse to learn about a bunch of different creative outlets. I can learn to code and 3D model and do pixel art, learn how Unity works and play around with lighting and cameras, and all these things that I already have an interest in. And I think this mindset of game dev as like a form of play has been really helpful for me. It's made game dev feel like something that I can use to step away from life and pour myself into a creative outlet, which is basically the reason I like being creative in the first place. It's, it's fulfilling for its own sake. But I feel like my eyes have been opened a little bit to the rationale behind the sage wisdom of elder game devs when they say you should just make a bunch of small projects and finish them. In my mind, I've always filtered this advice through a creative medium that I'm more familiar with, filmmaking. I figured that game devs were advising amateurs to finish projects because it would force them to learn hard skills, like how to build a save system or how to optimize their games. Like it would force you to learn technical skills. But what I'm realizing is that this advice is also geared towards getting amateur game devs to learn the art of game design, the art of making a game worth playing, of coming up with little prototypes and then making them and refining them until they're fun to play with, before you leap into making a larger game. Which sounds like, <laughs> like so stupidly obvious. Like obviously you need to learn game design to design games. Game design is a, a sub-skill of game development in the way that 3D modeling is, in the way that coding is, in the way that all these skills are necessary components of game dev. Game design is, is a muscle that I was not learning how to flex because I was not finishing games. It's not that the things that I've been learning so far aren't important, but to use the filmmaking analogy again, I feel like I've been learning how to operate a camera and learning about color theory and lighting and all these things, but I've been neglecting to learn about story structure. No matter how good your cinematography is, it's not going to matter that much if you can't come up with interesting things to put in front of the camera. And so I've been forced to reckon with the way that my mindset about game dev is holding me back. The game that I've been working on this whole time is sort of a low fantasy detective RPG, inspired in equal parts by survival horror puzzles and games like Planescape Torment and Disco Elysium. And since my last devlog, this is the project that I've spent the most time on. Because a game like this is so driven by narrative, I've spent a lot of time drafting an outline for the story, coming up with characters, coming up with puzzles, and finding ways that these all tie together in this world but a thought has been plaguing me the entire time that I couldn't necessarily put my finger on. And I think now I know what it is. No matter how far along I get in drafting the story for this game, and no matter how many of the conversations and puzzles I implement into my prototype, I can't help but feel that it's nearly impossible for me, an amateurish hobbyist game dev, to boot up this prototype, play it, and get a real sense of what it feels like to play this game if you're not the person who made it. <laughs> this lighting is so dramatic, it's so distracting. <laughs> I wanted to record something to talk about a, a revelation that I've had about game design and about the way that I relate to games and why it's difficult specifically to make smaller games for me. Um, a lot of the games that I enjoy and therefore the types of games that I think I would like to make are games that are heavily driven by uh, kind of like big picture goals or larger story arcs or world building elements or some progression that like the micro moments play into this larger arc of your experience. I think I have a tendency to think in those larger arcs because those are the things that excite me, right? Like the thing that excites me isn't clicking on a troop and sending them to do something. The thing that excites me is the, the strategical macro scale thing that's being represented in that. Maybe there's a hundred of those troops advancing and they're all capturing some point for you. And the strategic implications of that, of resources you'll have access to, geopolitical relationships between you and the other players on the map, those are the things that interest me. But that's difficult for, a, for an amateur indie developer because if you start from that and work your way backwards, you're essentially trying to find retroactively the game mechanics that will be fun to support your macro idea. And I think that's going about it backwards. There's a devlog done by Yahtzee for The Escapist where he talks about going to teach at like a high school or something or like a middle school and talking to these kids about game dev and game design and asking them what kind of games they'd like to make. 
by his account, a lot of the pitches that they made were, you know, kind of grand ideas, secondary or tertiary loops, essentially. Uh, you know, things like, oh, you're like an explorer and you're exploring, or like you're like conquering other kingdoms. But then when pressed about the core game loop, core gameplay loop of these game ideas, a lot of them kind of responded with blank expressions. And I think that this is the sage wisdom within the make small games thing. It's that by forcing yourself to make small games, which often don't have the luxury of these kind of bigger, grander ideas being expressed through them, you're forced into a, uh, a confrontation with the necessity of the core gameplay loop. Because if your game is just jumping around in a room and you have to make that fun, it's, it's, it's forcing you to learn game design. It's forcing you to build tools for your game that then you build levels out of, right? I'm trying to take inspiration from that and just make something dirt simple. Just to have a fun idea, a fun mechanical, mechanically driven idea, a fun gameplay idea, not a not an experience idea, not a theme idea, but just a game play idea that is fun. I feel like coming up with an idea for a core gameplay mechanic is both the hardest and the easiest thing imaginable. Like on the surface of it, you're just saying what would be a fun thing to do if you were playing a video game, right? But then following through and not only making that mechanic, but making it feel good. And not only making it feel good, but finding interesting applications for it. I think that's the difficult game design process that I really want to force myself to learn. So I started a bare bones new project with just Unity's nav mesh in there. And I took what I knew about ray casting from previous prototypes and made a little system where when you're within shooting range of an enemy, the game pauses and lets you click on which enemy you want to shoot at. Then it chooses a random number from a range and does that much damage to the enemy. And then resumes the game and triggers a cooldown for when you can shoot again. But it was around this time that I was talking to a good friend of mine about a game idea that we've had forever which is kind of like a colony sim about guerrilla warfare. And I thought it might be fun to take the code that I'd written and try to sketch out kind of a prototype for the idea that we've been kicking around. I figured the best course of action wasn't just to finish the first idea I came up with, but to rapidly prototype a bunch of small ideas, flush them out a little bit, and see which ones have potential. And so while I was taking every idea seriously, I was also very comfortable with taking a couple hours to quickly mock up any idea that popped into my head and seemed interesting. And this project was actually a great learning opportunity. Because the gameplay is centered around aggressive AI guards who patrol the area, I was forced to make a more complicated AI than I previously had, just to even get the faintest idea of what this game might play like. And as with most things in game dev, trying to figure out basic things like line of sight and target management created a whole new set of puzzles for me to solve. But the speed at which I was able to make these things happen was very encouraging. In fact, it kind of made me feel grateful for learning a lot of technical skills before I got deeper into game design. Because I think six months ago, if I had tried to prototype something this simple, it would have resulted in weeks of tutorial watching and documentation checking as I tried to troubleshoot a bunch of individual issues. One of the core design ideas in this project would be that you're typically outgunned by the city's authoritarian guards. And so the solution to this, in my mind, is allowing your revolutionaries to make use of cover which incentivizes the player to think carefully about their positioning and approach. I made a system so that you can see which cover spots are viable, but I haven't really decided how cover functions yet, like whether it incurs a miss penalty on the guard or people in cover can't get shot unless they're poking their heads out. So I kind of put that feature on hold for now. I also wrote a script that assigns every unit a personalized routine when they're created. So every colonist, or whatever you want to call them, will have a stove and a bed that belongs to them, which would be easy enough to have trigger a change in meters for hunger or energy or whatever. And so in a surprisingly short amount of time, I'd thrown together this prototype, where a gang of ruthless guards patrol a city block of placeholder art assets and shoot at any colonist who's unlucky enough to be in range and not break line of sight. I still like this colony sim idea a lot, but I've taken a couple weeks off working on it because I can already feel it growing out of scope even as I lay in the most basic elements. The gist of it is that my ideal version of this game involves building like a, like a fully functioning giant city. Again, I could feel myself creeping into the territory of not learning game design basics because I was creeping into the territory of giant ambitious game ideas. So to get the juices flowing, I allowed myself just a little bit of well-deserved tinkering. What I figured is that the majority of the AI scripts that I'd written for the guards in this colony sim would apply to your standard enemy in a survival horror game. And I also recently played the first two Silent Hill games, which probably had something to do with it. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? So I made a modified version of the guard AI and a creepy little guy who crawls around. And lo and behold, there was horror. And then I went a little overboard with the visuals, you know, as a treat. 
I think it's abundantly clear that I was easily distracted from my original mission of simple game ideas, but uh, we'll get back to that. Let's just enjoy the horror for a minute. I feel like the ease of this pivot to horror is a good demonstration of how working on generally useful things like the guard's AI is time well spent. And I liked this little horror idea so much that I wanted to take that inspiration and run with it. So I had an idea for a little space station. Before you say it, I know, this is a lot of aesthetic nonsense and not a lot of building the muscle of game design. But the, you know, the uh, the game's gotta look good. This, this is, look how fucking cool this is. This is cool. But 3D modeling a little solar system, yeah, that, that was probably too far. So I am trying to focus more on the mechanical side of things. But I feel like I'm powerless before a bolt of inspiration and I feel like I just need to pin that idea down before it flies away. So I quickly added old school survival horror camera changes and shooting with a very rudimentary auto aim and the ability to stagger enemies with their shot or throw together a quick proof of concept for a hallway illuminated by the blue glow of a terminal monitor. So trying to think a little bit more mechanically, like I promised myself I would, I thought it'd be cool to add a feature to the enemies where they're invisible until the player gets sufficiently close. And quickly tested it out in a separate Unity project, and then once it was working, I brought it into the survival horror project. And again, I found myself inspired to start drawing maps of a space station and writing backstory, doing things that were too ambitious and getting away from the core gameplay loop here. But I can't help it if that's the thing that excites me about games. Like, I, I, the goal is to steer myself in the direction of getting better at rapidly prototyping and figuring out game ideas that are worth working on and then building them up. But this survival horror stuff felt like an idea that was worth building up, so I don't know. Maybe it's overly ambitious, but uh, these the maps I drew aren't going anywhere, so... And weirdly enough, this ghost material script gave me an idea for something that I thought might be cool in the colony sim. Remember the colony sim? The gist of it was basically that you have power poles and units, and the units can detect how far they are from each of the power poles, and that determines whether or not they can function. Throw in a little bit of top-down shooter, you got yourself a weird little fun genre hybrid experiment. But I think this third rapid prototype exposed me to the way in which I was kind of just doing the same exercise in futility. Not only picking larger game ideas, but picking prototypes to make based on Oh, a, a top-down shooter colony sim, like... And the problem with those genre hybrids, or taking a genre and putting an interesting spin on it, or whatever you want to call these, the problem is that there's a bunch of design assumptions baked into any genre word or whatever. Like, calling a game a top-down shooter communicates something generally about what it'll be like. Like, by doing a genre hybrid where you say, oh, it's a colony sim top-down shooter, you're immediately blowing by a million design questions about both the shooting and the colony sim elements of the game. And in one sense, you're making a way more complicated problem because not only do you have to nail the shooting and not only do you have to nail the colony sim, but you also have to find a way to make both of those loops intersect in ways that are both meaningful and interesting. But I think this insight is almost equally true even if you're just picking a single genre. And so I started to think that maybe the approach I needed to take if I wanted to start building my tiny little game design muscles was just to try making a tiny little game. Not even a game, really. Just a mechanic. Just to ask what would it feel like if you could roll down a hill and then make that a reality? Or what if you used that ball rolling to simulate a character sliding down a hill? Or what if you could hold a button to glide or boost yourself up into the air? So I tried to constrain the scope of any one idea to something that I could just quickly sketch up and play with. And I made almost a dozen little prototypes with different little mechanics and just quick little mechanical sketches. But one of these little sketches stood out from the rest. I figured while I was just rapidly prototyping, I might as well try an idea that I've been wanting to test out for a while now. So again, I took the AI from the colony sim, god bless the colony sim, and what I figured is that even though making a Souls-like is one of those ridiculously ambitious projects I'm trying to stay away from, making a barebones combat system is something I could cobble together in an afternoon if I was using placeholder art and animations. Which is an idea that six months ago I would have told you was ridiculous and impossible. So I disabled hang gliding and butt sliding, brought in some placeholder assets and placeholder animations, and quickly threw together a few scripts for things like camera control and weapon hit detection. One of the core little mechanical ideas I had for this prototype was to take inspiration from Sekiro in the way that blocking at the last possible moment results in a perfect block, but playing it safe and blocking early results in some form of penalty. So I put together a little co-routine that runs whenever the player hits block, during which there's a very brief window for a perfect block, which makes that metallic shing sound that you're hearing. 
whereas blocking early results in taking half as much damage as an unblocked hit. What I was saying earlier regarding top-down shooters, where just buying into a genre convention can allow you to skip over a lot of the important design decisions, I feel like I was approaching this prototype differently by taking into careful consideration all of these little design decisions. How long the parry window was, the consequences of a block, adding in things like hit-stopping and knockback, and an unfinished dodge, which has no animation yet. And I feel like this prototype is really cool and has a lot of potential. And even though everything in this prototype is placeholder, it's actually a lot of fun to play with. It feels like a little character action game in the making. And I haven't been working on it for very long. In fact, a couple of the clips you're seeing were recorded over the last couple days. But it has promised to me. Like, even though the idea of making an action RPG or a Souls-like is definitely one of those ideas that I'd categorize as overly ambitious, I'm building a foundation. I'm making this fun to play in a single room with a single guy before jumping into bigger ideas like, oh, what if there was player housing and you could take over a kingdom? No, stop. We're not we're not taking over any kingdoms until it feels good to swing a sword, all right? That's the new that's the new rule. So has my new rapid prototyping approach found the perfect game idea? The one I'll devote the next 2 to 18 years of my life bringing to fruition? I mean, no, not not really. But I do feel that these experimentations and this shift in mindset is an essential step for me as a game designer and therefore as a game developer. No matter how much discipline you have, or how many hours you spend working on things, or how hard you work, I think it's important in any pursuit to take time and step back and reflect upon where you're headed. I think just because you're making a lot of stuff and working really hard doesn't mean you'll necessarily learn the right lessons or learn how to better apply your effort. Like, if you make more stuff, you're definitely more likely to stumble upon better technique. But I think taking a month off of game dev and then reevaluating my approach is like a healthy and natural part of learning a new creative process. And also, I've spent countless hours working on my RPG project, which I'm intentionally not showing a lot of, because on the off chance that I ever finish it in 10 years, I'd like some parts of it to be a little surprising. And that reminds me of one more thing I wanted to mention, which is that I've found paper prototyping is a really good way for me to organize my thoughts around game dev, and that's gotten me really interested in drawing. I'm bad at drawing, and I've never been good at drawing. I've always wanted to be good at drawing, but I've never practiced or tried to be good at drawing. But all this paper prototyping has gotten me interested in sketching a little bit, so... Yet another way in which game dev is a good igniter for different types of creativity. So then what's the next step here? Well, I think I'll refine that combat prototype a little more, and then try to make a level out of it and see how fun it is, and then probably refine it a little more. I'll probably keep writing for the RPG, because that's kind of like a passion project. I'll probably mess around more with the idea of doing a survival horror game. But I don't want to just do it for the sake of doing it. I really want to have an original idea before I take a stab at it. But nonetheless, game dev is something that brings me a lot of joy. And so hopefully the last couple months have been not only a step towards learning how to be a game designer, but learning how to make games that are worth finishing and get one step closer to sharing the things I'm working on with people. And if there's anything I've learned from working on video games documentaries, it's that ideas compound upon each other. It's the reason Legacy of Kane and Gex share an engine. And so while my experiments may seem far-flung and unrelated, underlying all of them is a core of curiosity about game development, and also like a ton of reusable code. And so I think that having it click in my head that there is a game design skill, muscle, that you need to build, uh, and that in order to kind of design these bigger loops, you need to design smaller loops first. I guess I just like... I don't know, maybe I'm just dumb. <laughs> maybe I'm just like a fucking idiot and everyone knows this. But this this felt like a revelation to me and whatever. If this episode is like me coming off as dumb, then like, whatever. But like when I make documentary stuff and people reach out to me and they say, oh, I watched this and it really like touched me or something. Or I, you know, I never would have known about this person's story unless you had interviewed them and put this together. Um... That's kind of the most meaningful response you could ask for, right? Like, knowing that something that you made affected somebody in a positive way, I think, is one of the most powerful, profound experiences you could ask for. And that's that's a huge part of the reason I like making art. And so I, I want to get serious about finishing games. I want to learn to finish games. It's sort of been my blind spot. It's the blind spot that I've been overlooking. And I think that the best thing you can do for yourself as a creative person, as a craftsman, as a whatever you want to call it, is um, to identify those blind spots and not be upset that you haven't been working on that up till now, but just to recognize where you're at and appreciate all the progress you've made in other areas. And then by the time I'm a better game designer, I'll still have those, those modeling and coding and drawing skills to help me along the way. So that's kind of it. 
I've gotten a lot of work done in the last few months. I took like a month off of game dev because I just needed some time to focus on work and like mental health stuff. But I'm kind of more excited than ever before. I think that what I've been doing is learning how to play the instrument and learning the theory behind it. You're learning how to string your guitar and you're learning music theory and all these things. But it's about knowing how to take all of those skills that you've built as a game developer and apply them to a game idea that <laughs> this is like the worst and the best metaphor imaginable. I think it's about playing the right fucking notes, all right? It's about you're learning to play the right notes. I think that that is the essential thing here. Yeah, I don't know. Did that, did that make any sense? Did I get, is that anything? Did I say anything there? <laughs> So that's it.